Let's make this a little longer here. Okay. So what's the moment of inertia of that? Okay, well, depends on the question, right? Around what axis am I asking you to find the moment of inertia? Well, I could ask this axis. I could ask this axis around that axis. I could ask this axis, right? I could ask basically any axis, and I could say, what's the moment of inertia around that axis? So what's the moment of inertia about this guy here? Let's call this axis 1. So it'll be 2 kilogram times the distance 1 squared, right? Plus 1 kilogram times, what's that distance? 3, right? 3 squared. So it's going to be uh, 11, right? 11 kilogram meter square is the moment of inertia around axis 1. Okay? How about the moment of inertia about axis 2? So, 1 times 1 squared, right, plus 1 times 2 squared. You see? So, what are you going to get there? Uh, you're going to end up with 5. Ah, so it's oh, about twice as easier to rotate it around that point. Okay. How about the moment of inertia about axis 3? Um, so it's going to be 1 times uh, this distance squared, uh, 3 squared, plus 2 times 2 squared. Okay. So that's going to be 8 plus 3 is going to be, oh, it's going to be uh, 9 or oh, 17. Oh, that's the hardest one, right? So. What's going to end up happening here? So it seems like this one is the one of the easiest, huh? Because it's near the center, right? What do you think is going to be the simplest point to rotate this around? Besides these three, what point is there? Center of mass. Okay. So where is the center of mass? Somewhere probably. Probably somewhere here, huh? Well, let's find the center of mass from chapter 9, you see. So um, I'm going to put the x, y axis right here. So uh, based on that x, y axis, where is the center of mass? So it's going to be 2 times 1. plus 1 times 3, right, divided by the total mass of the system, which is what? Plus 2 plus 1. So it's going to be what here? Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5 over... That's uh, four, five fourths, right? So it looks like it's actually it looks like it's about the same place that I thought. It's about one and a quarter. So here's the center of mass. So let's find the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Okay, I'll close the door here.
We're going to go roughly about eight, ten more minutes, something like that. The, the limit is that 90, right? 90 minutes over there? Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to try to push it through. Okay, so um, x is 5 fourths. So what is the moment of inertia about the center of mass? Okay. So then you're going to say, well, 1 times 5 fourths squared, right? Plus 2 times, what is this little distance here? It's just 1 fourth, right? Plus 1 times, what is this distance here? If that is 1 fourth, this is, uh, what, uh, 7 fourths, right? Yeah, this part is 7 fourths. So 1 times 7 fourths squared. OK? So what is its moment of inertia? So now it's going to be, let's see here, 25 over 16 plus 2 over 16 plus 49 over 16. Huh. So it's going to be 51 plus 25 is um, 76. So roughly about 4 and um, okay. Now, look at that. 4.75. It is even less than the moment of inertia about axis 2. So we showed here that uh, it is the least of those possible. Now I'm going to show you how to use the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem tells you that the moment of inertia about any axis is equal to I center of mass plus MD squared, the total mass of the system. Okay, and then we'll go. We'll do one example of uh, integration one, and then we should end with that. So this is what the parallel axis theorem is saying. You once you know the center of mass moment of inertia of a system, you can translate to any other axis. Okay, so let's say I wanted to find I one. Let's say I wanted to find I1, and I knew that the I center of mass is 4.75, right? So I would put here 4.75, and then I would do the total mass of the system, okay, which is what? Four, Four right? We've used it here. Then I would do the distance from the center of mass to that axis for which I want to find the center, uh, the moment of inertia. So what is that distance? from the center of mass to axis 1 is uh, 5 fourths, right? So I add those two, and I get what here? Six point two five, right? Six point two five plus four point seven five. Eleven, huh? Yeah. Okay. So you could try this on your own too. You could try once you know the center of mass, moment of inertia of anything, translate it to any point. It should give you the same answer as getting the moment of inertia of that point. You see? So this shows that the center of mass moment of inertia is always the least moment of inertia. It's the most minimum. Okay, now let's.